Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's more pitch meetings here. More of the MCU-verse. Which one, Dan? So we're moving on to Thor The Dark World. Oh yeah, the best one. No. <laughs> well, let's go find out why, guys. I'm sure there's a reason it has a pitch meeting. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So, you have a Thor sequel script for me. Yes, sir, I do. And you know how the first movie started with Odin narrating over a flashback of a big war between Asgardians and an evil race over some magical artifact? Oh, so you're gonna mix that up a bit, start it differently? No, I'm gonna do that again. Oh, oh you are! Oh, Except God. this time, instead of frost giants, it's dark elves, and the magical thing is called the Ether. Well, I guess that's slightly different from the first movie. Oh, yeah, slightly different from the first movie's the name of the game here. No. Nice. Yeah, like we're gonna do that thing again where a major plot point in involves Thor going against his dad's wishes to take on an enemy, but it's not the same enemy, so it's slightly different. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. So anyway, we're gonna meet up with Thor, and he's gonna be all sad and mopey. Oh, that's interesting. It's like, hey, what if Thor was less fun as a character? Right, so yeah, he's all bummed out because he misses Jane. But wait, wasn't he just on Earth for the Avengers movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she's all he can think about, you'd think he would have reached out to her or something. Yeah, he was just so busy, you know, there was no time. He went out for shawarma. Yeah, just super busy. <laughs> and didn't they only spend, like, a couple of days together several years ago? Yeah, but the bond they created is strong and eternal. What if Natalie Portman doesn't come back for another movie in the future? Well, we'll just have them break up. It's no big deal. Great. Yeah. <laughs> so how does she get involved in this I'll movie? Well, we're gonna have her happen to be the one human on Earth to stumble upon a portal, which then happens to bring her right next to the ether, which happens to take over her body, which then makes her integral to the plot. Wow, that is a real stretch. Yeah, well, the thing is, I hear stretching is actually really good for you. That's a good point. <laughs> stretching is Not tight, that especially when your muscles are feeling tight. Anyway, so because she kind of activated the ether, this dark elf Malekith wakes up from hypersleep. Oh, what's his deal? Well, there's this convergence thing happening where all the nine realms align, so he wants to use the ether to plunge them all into darkness. Why? Because he's evil. Why is he evil? <laughs> he's not very nice. How come, though? He's the bad guy. Oh, that's as deep <laughs> good as enough. this goes. That's all you need. Yeah, he's a big meanie, just a real bully. So who else is in the movie? Oh, well, Darcy the intern's gonna be in the movie again, and now she has an intern, too. Why? Because he's like a sidekick. Isn't she already a sidekick? Yeah, so adding another one's like an extra layer of comedy. Is it? Maybe. I don't know how these things work. <laughs> no. Fair enough. Anyway, so then the whole story's helped along by the fact that Heimdall is horrible at his job. What do you mean? Well, his whole Jeez. thing is that he sees everything and he's supposed to guard the Bifrost Bridge. Right. But he can't see Jane, so Thor has to go get her. Oh. And then he doesn't notice an obvious enemy sneaking past him. Damn. And he doesn't realize there's a giant invasion until it's too late. Wow, yeah, they should probably find someone else to do yeah. his job. Yeah, yeah, well, to blind. be fair, it seems like everyone on Asgard is pretty incompetent. How so? Well, for one thing, they put prisoners in cells in their full armor without checking them at all. Right. So yeah, that's yeah. gonna lead to this giant attack slash prison break scene. Well, the bad guys got lucky that everybody on Asgard sucks. Oh yeah, real lucky. <laughs> so what happens during the scene? Well, Thor's mom is gonna take care of protecting Jane, right? Okay. And she's gonna trick Malekith by creating an illusion that Jane was there, but she really wasn't. Very sneaky. So then she's gonna get killed. Why didn't she create an illusion of herself too? Well, I want her to die so it brings Thor and Loki oh, together. On. Right, but she could have easily not died. Yeah, right. but you want her to. Well, okay then. Yeah, so I then later, to. Thor and Loki and Jane are gonna go to the Dark World. Okay. And Malekith is gonna get the ether, and Loki's gonna get killed. But not really. Of course not. People love Loki. Okay, great. <laughs> and Jane's gonna be like, man, I wish I had never found the ether. Yeah, this is kind of all her fault. Yeah, but Thor's like, you know, if you hadn't found it, then Malekith would have just found it sooner. But didn't Malekith only wake up because she found it? Right. So what the hell is Thor talking about? I don't know. Drunk. Fair enough. So then Thor and Jane get trapped in the dark world. Oh man, is it gonna be hard for them to get out of there? Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh really? Yeah, they're immediately gonna stumble onto a spot that has a direct portal to Earth. Jane even has cell phone oh, reception and finds her car lucky. keys. Wow, that is extremely convenient. Yes. So then there's gonna be a huge battle on Earth involving portals and stuff. And what happens if Thor loses? Well, it's the end of reality as we know it. So I imagine the Avengers are gonna come help since the fight's happening on Earth? No. But they all get to stop an invasion in the first Avengers movie. They're not gonna try to stop the end of reality. It's just not important enough to justify getting what? the whole team together. In the next Avengers movie, they're gonna get together to fight a snarky robot. Yeah, see, that sounds important. <laughs> Thor's gonna handle this one alone, if you say so. So then Malekith is gonna get crushed like a cartoon character, and that's about it. Hilarious. So what do you think? Well, people seem Jesus. to like the first movie, and this is pretty much a rehash of that, so I think we're good. Awesome. I mean, as long as the actors like it, that's all that really matters. Hmm, I'm taking they didn't, okay. Yep, and I don't blame them. Who would have thought? Actors didn't like the thing that they were making. Mm. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. No. 
been a little while since we left all the way through a pitch meeting there. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was a pretty good one, actually. Well, that's how you know it was a terrible movie. Yeah, they right. had plenty to make fun. Yeah, that's the rule, right, fan? Right. When the, the worse the movie, the better the pitch meeting. And that was a pretty good pitch meeting, so... Absolutely. That's how you That's how you know you had a good product there. <laughs> they really did nail Heimdall to the wall on this one here. Right. He, like, those eyes weren't worth the shit in the end. Like, why do we keep you here? Anybody can pull that sword out of the device. We don't need you. Exactly. <laughs> Don't they actually explore that later on? Anybody can do it, so they... Like, I'm pretty do. sure in every one of these videos, something bad happens to him. Like, what are you doing, Heimdall? I don't get it, yeah. It could just be that, you know, things don't work the way they used to, as you get older, I guess. But aren't they, like, practically embodiments of gods? So... Well, I guess even gods make mistakes. Apparently so. I mean, we know that's the truth going forward. You know, some of these guys get to where they think the shit don't stink. Right. And look at, look at what happens to them, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And of course, you know, Thor's mother dying needlessly because she apparently can't use magic to protect herself yeah no it's like you can so you can create illusions much like loki could yeah which now i know where you learned it from but but also you can't create an illusion of yourself and just let that guy in there wasting his own time wait does that mean loki's a mama's boy Ooh, <laughs> maybe that could be a reason for why thor and loki are you know at one another's throats is because it's like you get love from one parent over the other right i feel like that wasn't the case for his mom I think she lo loved them both equally. Maybe. But it sounds like Thor tastes more after his father, too. He does. But I think the problem is she, you got equal love from one parent, but mm. not the other. True. So. True. Well, I mean, it's not like he actually is Thor's son, so... No, but you took it on You took on the adoption role, so right. you kind of have to take on the parent role then. Right. So. I thought that movie was going to be interesting because of the big attack on, on Asgard there. Mm -hmm. Like, that was actually kind of a cool moment, but the rest of the plot really sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it it kind of... The Dark Elves were not the most interesting villains. I mean, and unless they're going to be recurring villains, there's just no way to make them interesting. No, they practically got wiped out. Right. <laughs> so be it. And then, of course, once again, no Avengers. Yeah, what is this deal here? It's like, I swear to you, the only reason that you don't see them in there is because they cost you damn much money. Well, I'm pretty sure that is the case behind the scenes and inside the Marvel Universe. What's the reason? And like you said, this is an existential crisis. Like, you can't just not show up and save the day. Yeah, because the, uh, the Dark Elves were wreaking some pretty serious havoc there. Right. You would have expected to see S.H.I.E.L.D. show up. Somebody. Right. Nobody. Yeah. It's like they never existed. Not one single person is supposed to be monitoring the Earth and keeping track of all the bad guys realized that there are aliens attacking the planet and did anything about it. Where were they attacking? London? Or something? I think so. Iron Man could have showed up for that easily. Showed up enough in, in the Avengers. Well, it's a major in Germany. Thing. You gotta yeah. have somebody there. Or somebody that can show up quickly. Right. Not even like the, the magicians from Doctor Strange could have show could have yeah, portaled they, in. They have a place there in London. Yeah. They yeah. should that should have been the first people to show up. Okay. <laughs> this hole's all over the MCU fam. It, it really is. Like, the Avengers just do what they want, apparently. Like, yeah, I don't feel like saving the day this week. Well, I mean, I guess if you see Thor out there, you're like, oh, he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't take that chance. I mean, he got scraped up a little bit, but he ended up having it. All right. So, of course, that's just how the plot was written, but still. Right. And, of course, all the prisoners have their armor. Like, yeah, this, that's what you do with your prisoners. You leave them with whatever they had, and you put them in the prison cells. I guess it's okay if they don't stand a chance to get out, but they clearly got out. <laughs> yeah. Easily. Yes. Uh, Live and learn, but, you know, Asgard got destroyed. So. Yeah, they, they didn't have a chance to learn. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's for another movie. Absolutely, guys. We don't know anything about that yet. <laughs> and that's exactly where we're going to leave that. But as always, guys, if you're brand new, I hope you'll consider liking, subscribing, hitting the bells, checking us out on all those things up there. Like and subscribe again while you're at it. But as always, this is Cocktail Flix. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Later, guys.